Good, the bad, the dirty, brought to you by our great friends and partners at Avondale Roofing. If your roof, whether it's commercial or residential, has taken a beating, check out our friends and partners at Avondale Roofing. Search avondaleroofing.com. You can read reviews, sign up for a free estimate. Avondale on top until you're satisfied. Yeah. Um, I should give you a couple headlines before uh, we go to the good. Uh, Jared Goff got a four-year, $212 million contract extension. Good for him. That's a $170 million guarantee. And uh, Edbert Alzale has been put on the 15-day IL for the Cubs, a uh, forearm strain, and Jose Quas has been called up. He's a home run given up machine. Quas is. Well, him or, too, yeah, Alzale. Yeah, most of them are. Go ahead with your good. I don't see too encouraged. You don't see too encouraged about your really good baseball team. They are. They're pretty good. They could be even better. Speaking of that, my good is a good outing by a really good guy and a good friend of the show. He's back, Kyle Hendricks. I'm not saying that. It was just a really good start. Five innings, two hits, one earned run, five walks, five Ks. Did give up a home run. Got to lower the walk total. That is true. But for a guy who had an ERA of 12. And a good friend of the program, I like to say, maybe a bit of an exaggeration, but we like him. He's a good guy. It was good to see Kyle Hendricks go to the bump and have a good game. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Is that asking for too much? No. He has been absolutely awful. Yes, he has. Up until this past start. Yes. By the way, Donovan Mitchell's decided he doesn't want to play tonight. No, he's just out with the injury. Calf strain. Yes. Uh, Here's my good. You know me. I'm a man of the people. No matter where I went this weekend... Everyone wanted to uh, an autograph and wanted a picture? Yeah, you know that. No, and nobody did. Where, wherever I went, I went to Dick Sporting Goods. I went to Played Against Sports. I went to two baseball games, one house league game, one travel game. I went out to dinner to Abigail's on Saturday. Wherever I went and wherever I talked to people, do you know what they wanted to know about? Caleb Williams. And the Bears. Everybody wants to talk about the Bears. Everybody wants to hear about Caleb Williams. Everybody is excited. And that, my friend, is a great thing. This is a good thing. People are excited. People are bullish on the Bears. Um, and the city is ready. The ci- and this is only Bears rookie camp, mini camp. But um, people just can't stop talking about the text messages, conversations. By the way, did you give him his football back on his first practice completion? Did you yeah, give it back? Yeah, that, that has been given back. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That has been given That's back. good. good move by you. That was just a fake video. It was a real video, but a fake prop. Go ahead, Meller. What's your uh, good? My good, the Nuggets T-Wolves series continues to be excellent. The Nuggets showed up this weekend, including yesterday, near the end of the half, the final 20 seconds, Anthony Edwards had just cut the lead to seven, and it looked like they would be going into the half with momentum, the T-Wolves, that is. And then sure enough, in the final 20 seconds, the Nuggets with a KCP3, then a Michael Porter Jr. layup with a quick five points. And then what were the T-Wolves doing as they inbound the ball at the end of the half with less than like two seconds to go? Jamal Murray steals the ball and then fires it right in Kevin Harlan's face, noted T-Wolves announcer and sure enough the three goes Murray hits the three at the end of the half and the T-Wolves extend the seven point lead to to 15 and sure enough they end up winning by eight it was a crazy sequence and just uh, this series has delivered for me T-Wolves and Nuggets and uh, yeah game five is going to be fantastic I think it will be the best game of the series my good from the weekend, Blades Brown. And if you're not sure who that is, he is a 16-year-old who finished 26th in a PGA Tour event this weekend. 16 years old, finished uh, in 26th place. His name in- is Blades Brown? Blades Brown, and he fired a 66 in round three on Saturday. Is, it, is Blades a nickname because he plays with the old Blades? Like, like a blade putter? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what his, his clubs, what, what kind of putter he uses. Blades of grass? But- no, uh, he he's 16 years old, and he beats some some names that you may like know if you're a golf fan. Uh, there were two events this week on the PGA Tour. This was the the secondary event, but he still beat some some pretty solid names at 16 years old, including his 66 in round three. 
Ronald was going out drinking at 16. I think he was going out at 15. You can keep that, that weak ass 16 year old stuff. <laughs> but you're bad. Sitting down at the bridge, weren't you? You were drinking under the uh, bridge? Creek. The creek? Creek, yeah. We used to call it Betaco Creek. Betaco Creek. Did you call it the creek or the creek? No, creek. We called it a creek. The people in Iowa used to call it the creek. The, yeah. I mean, I've heard, obviously heard that, but no, we called it a creek. This is kind of like a, a, a bad, good, good, bad thing. Look, the White Sox had won four in a row, and they were on the verge of sweeping the, the Guardians until they decided to get shut out again for the 10th time this year. And my bad is, is that this team, although they've been playing better baseball of late, have been shut out in 25% of their baseball games. They've been shut out 10 times in 41 games. That's bad. It's consistency. You want a consistent I, that's, baseball team? That, that's that's got to be a record. One quarter of your baseball games through the first quarter of the season. You've keep, been shut out. Can't keep up that pace, though. I mean, isn't it like that's like crazy, impressively bad? Yeah, it is. Ten but times they've been it, shut it was, out. Wasn't it fairly predictable they would lose yesterday? They weren't going to sweep Cleveland. It was a four-game series too, wasn't Correct. it? Yes. They, they weren't going to win four they straight won the against last the Guardians, game of the Rays, were they? And then won three straight against the Guardians, and then got shut out for the tenth time this year. Yeah. So. You know, look, I know they're playing better at baseball, but you can't get shut out in 25% of your games. My bad is um, the hate directed at Nicky Madrigal. I'm not here for it. You, you, you take your hate for Nick Madrigal and shove it. Because Nick you, you Madrigal... pray at the altar of a 200 hitter? I'm not praying at the altar. I don't hate... Uh, Nick Madrigal again showed you at third base yesterday in extra innings that the the dude can play third base. While the Cubs were reeling with the bullpen and Alzale, he made an important diving play that nearly got a double play, and they got the force at second. Uh, do not disparage Nick Br Madrigal Br Br anymore. Bro's batting 196 this year. Half the team's batting 196 this year. All the averages are down around baseball. I'm not here for the Nick Madrigal hate. He's had some big hits this year, too. He's got how many hits on the season? He's got 11 hits. They were all important hits. See? White Sox have been shut out almost as many times as nicky has been on base with hits. You, you could take your hate and take it somewhere else, <laughs> because my bad is stuff like that. Nicky 11 hits. Uh, He's got an OPS of 512. Rock that. Isn't that basically what Dansby Swanson is delivering for $160 million? Ooh, a little shade thrown at the big free agent signing last year. Um, and, well, Nicky's had three consecutive years of an OPS under 670. He's so. not going to give you a high OPS. He doesn't hit home runs. Well, what is he here for? <laughs> He's not going to slug. But he puts what, what, what's the, he here for? He's got a 282 on base percentage. He puts the O in P in OPP. You know me. What is the O? On base. OBP. Okay. Um, we good there? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. My, uh, no, no, we're great. I'm just making Nick sure. Madrigal. I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to uh, What do the advanced short. metrics say about a Nick Madrigal just to support Sylvie's case? Probably not great. We'll have when to look we have it, Craig Council on finally one day, I don't know when, we're going to ask him, a underrated, properly rated, or overrated Nick Madrigal? How about properly rated? I feel like uh, Nick Madrigal has a lot of Craig Council's game. In him, in him. So, hey, he might appreciate it more than two most. World Series, I'd take it. There you go. Um, all right, boys, my bad. How about this uh, this contract quirk that was revealed in international soccer over the other day? So, Borussia Dortmund will be playing Real Madrid in the Champions League final on June 1st. However, Borussia Dortmund sold their best young player, Jude Bellingham, to Real Madrid this previous offseason. Do you understand the language he's speaking right I now? Do. I do. I'm, I'm trying to follow. So you sound like Jesse right now. Here's what happened. Yeah, this one this one is for Jesse, actually. <laughs> so there's a clause that if Real Madrid wins the Champions League final, Borussia Dortmund will actually get an additional $6 million for the sale of Jude Bellingham, which means if they lose the Champions League final, they will actually make more money than if they win the Champions League final. 
That, my friends, is bad for international soccer. Now, I don't think they actually want to lose this game, but they will make more money if they end up losing the Champions League final. Does that make sense? Yes. But, so. well, it's not about the money when you win a title. No, though, no, of it? course not. But I'm just saying it's probably not great when your sport if you lose a game, you end up making more money. That's probably that not great for the That would be the, the ultimate sport. for Jerry with cash considerations <laughs> yes. right there. Jerry should get into international <laughs> soccer. A go. chance to lose and win. Tyler, go ahead. Uh, my bad is all of the Timberwolves aside from Anthony Edwards. There's this stat from John Krasinski who covers uh, the T-Wolves for The Athletic in 45... Is he on The Office? Yeah, I loved him there. Yeah, Jim. he's a director now, too. So uh, Anthony Edwards played 45 minutes and 20 seconds. The Timberwolves were a plus five with him on the floor, with him off the floor. So only two minutes and 40 seconds, they were a minus 13. And that was the difference in the game. It's incredible. And it's, it, 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 he is, he's very, very good. Carl Anthony Towns is not doing what he needs to be doing at this point yeah i know he uh, that's been the book on him that he can't be counted on that he's so good except he doesn't deliver the good all the time what's your dirty uh meller i'm speaking your language now the nhl has suspended uh canucks player carson is it susie you don't even know uh after a cross-checking uh connor mcdavid in the face during game three of their second round Cup playoff series yesterday. I don't know if you saw it, but it's it's awful. A dirty play. Yes, you cannot cross check somebody in the face. So, Carson, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. Saucy, Susie, you're suspended, big fella, for one game. Dirty shot. Play the hockey open for that one. Um, my dirty is the Cubs bullpen. There's so many so many dirty things. I have not, I have never been driven this crazy this early by a single Cubs bullpen before. Uh, even when Neris gets the job done, he drives me insane. They brought him in in the tie game yesterday, and he nearly gave it up loading the bases. Thank goodness you have Nicky Madrigal to lean on. <laughs> and then yesterday, uh, Saturday, we like I was telling you earlier, I don't remember a game where the Cubs were gifted six runs via walks. They were down six to one. They go up eight to six. And then right away, you bring in the, the bullpen. Here you go. Take the lead back. Don't mind us. Just take it. They gifted you the game with six. Uh, let's go in a rain delay. We just walked in four. Let's take a, a break. And when we come back, we're going to walk in two more of your, your runners. Here, Cubs, take the lead. We're gifting you the game in our Phenom's first game. And the Cubs bullpen, Keegan Thomas, is like, no thanks. I'm just going to give it right back. And Dick Lovelady, he's dicking around, all right. And then Craig Council keeps going to him. If you got a dick love lady on your bench, how can you not keep calling his number? My goodness. And then I tweet out that I've the hate that I have for the Cubs bullpen. And then the responses I get, hate's a strong word. It's 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 sports hate. If you're in traffic, you say, I hate traffic. You watch a bullpen implode, I hate this bullpen. Get off my lawn. You think Madrigal can pitch? You stay out of Madrigal, you know? Um, I'll, I'll go to that game, though, because Paul Skeen's debut was filthy dirty. It probably didn't go exactly as some people had hoped, but it was a pretty filthy outing. He looked nasty, and I can't wait to see more from him, although I certainly could stand to see less from Kyle Nicholas, Todd Blackledge's nephew, apparently. He's the man who came in and tried to relieve Paul Skeen's and then immediately hit a Cubs hitter and then proceeded he, Judd's on the phone he wants to trade for him <laughs> he's Todd Blackledge's nephew and he proceeded then to uh, walk the next three hitters on 12 pitches it was quite an outing for him so uh but nevertheless Paul Skeens was fun to watch my dirty is there was a youth baseball game this weekend and there a guy hit a grand slam he turns to bat flip he bat flips it and it hits the umpire in the head now the ump looks like he's selling it a little bit it looks like a total, like, straight out of Tom and Jerry's type of fall where he's just kind of swaying around and then eventually hits the deck. Did you see two? How do you even know Tom and Jerry? Isn't that well before oh, your no, time? Oh, no, Tom and Jerry was a Sunday morning was state. Okay. Yeah. 
Do kids still? No, I should know this because my kids don't watch Tom and Jerry. Yeah, I would get. But I bet like kids movie, these days though. would still no, like it. There's the Tom and Jerry movie, which there actually is, yeah. my, my son actually enjoyed quite a, See, my, quite a bit. My kids don't watch movies. I can't get them to watch a movie. I don't know if it's just too long or why they don't like movies. They just like those YouTube things. All right, there you go. The, the good, the bad, the dirty. Uh, we've got Aki Zalis coming up, and Tyler Dunn, who wrote that Bears article, is going to join us around 5.30. It's Waddle.